this is Megan from Little Hot Tamale and today we are going to learn how to make crepe paper trims. So to start off with we are going to learn how to make ruffled crepe paper and there's all different ways to make them. You can make it single, double, you can even triple it, you can make it super thin. Then we're also going to learn how to make my absolute favorite is the, like the crinkled ruffled crepe paper. And this one has multiple colors. There's also ones that are just one color, and this is just two strips of crepe paper. And then the more dainty style. Over right here with multiple colors. So let's jump into the tutorial. We're going to learn how to make the basic ruffled crepe paper trim. So you will need crepe paper, and this can be purchased at almost any retail store that provides party supplies. And you can either cut off a small strip, probably about a yard, or if you want to make very long pieces, for example for a backdrop for maybe pictures, you can put a pin in the middle like this and you can have it balanced between your knees. So when you're sewing, your crepe paper will not get twisted while you're feeding it through your sewing machine. Okay, so let's move on to the sewing machine. Let's cover our settings for our machine. So this is the tension, and then this is where you're placing your needle. I usually have mine in the middle, and then we have this set to zero and three for the stitch length. Now this is what I usually use when I sew paper, but since we're doing ruffled crepe paper, these will change. So I recommend if you're nervous about changing your dials, take a picture of it, then you can always set it back to how you had it. To start off with, we're going to set our length of our string to four. That will be the largest one on your machine. We'll keep this at zero, and then we're going to change the tension. I like to keep mine at either 9, 8, or 7. Now if you have it set at 9, that will make your ruffle more tight and compact, or 7. And I usually use 7 for most of my projects, so I'll show you a difference of the two. Okay, so this one is set at a 7. And this one, see how more curled it is and tight? This is a nine. But from so let's get started. For the basic ruffle, we are going to have our tension set to seven. This is going to be set to zero. And then this, the length of our stitch, set to four, the longest length. Now if you want I think I mentioned this earlier, if you want a more tight ruffle, you would want to set your tension to nine, but I prefer seven. Okay, so we have our presser foot down, and we're going to go up a few stitches, and then we're going to back stitch, And then, so. Now just try to keep it in the center. Let's see, and there's a nice little ruffle. And I'm not tugging it or anything, I'm just guiding the crepe paper. Snip it off, and there it is. And you can make a really long strip, or you can have short strips, and you can cut off as much as you need, and just put terrifically tacky tape on the back. Whenever you cut the string, to, so that the ruffles don't move or come off. So for example, I'll show you. See, I cut the string and then look. 
So you just want to put a little bit of adhesive on the end if you're going to cut through your string. Next ruffle trim is a narrow piece and it's made just like the very first one we made but it is slightly different because of the width of the crepe paper. To get the different kinds of width for your trims, you can just take a piece, snip it, and then we'll just line up the ends, fold it in half, line up the ends, fold it in half, and we're just going to cut down the middle. I love doing this because it can make your trim so much more customizable. So there you go. Let's run this through the sewing machine so we can see the finished product. So we're going to take our crepe paper, place it underneath the presser foot, then we're going to go a few stitches forward, and then we're going to back stitch to lock it in place. And we're just going to go forward. Okay, back stitch. And stitch. And then we're going to lift this up. Now, if your needle, my needle is up, but if it's not, there is a knob on the side of your machine that you can turn to make the needle go up or down. Just going to snip it. Yeah, and there it is. So for our next one, we're going to make the double ruffle. So you will need two colors, preferably one lighter than the other one. So I chose a pink and blue because when they're blended together, they make a nice lavender. See, you can see it right here. So, you'll take it like this and feed it through your machine. And if you were going to do a triple, you'd have these overlap in the middle and then place this one in the center. But I personally never do a triple because I find it hard to manage. And then just like the first ruffle, if you are going to do a very long strip for a backdrop, you can just place a pin or a dowel in the middle. Probably a dowel because a Sharpie marker is kind of thick. <laughs> okay, for the double ruffle, we're going to use two pieces of crepe paper and they're overlapped about a half an inch. Now we're just going to place this underneath the presser foot, set it down, and then for this one, we're going to have it set to nine because I really want the ruffles to be nice and tight. Okay, so we're going to go forward a few stitches, lock it in place by using a back stitch and going forward. I'm just turning the knob because the needle was in the machine and through the crepe paper. Just pull it and then snip it. And uh, there you go. Next ruffle crepe paper we're going to make is this one. Now these are exactly the same except this one has one color and it only has two layers and this one has four layers. An example of this on a project would be this. And I believe this one only has a three layers. So it really brings out your projects. You can also use this on trims like party hats or any kind of project actually. <laughs> okay, so let's make these. Pick out your favorite colors that you want to use. And I chose these. I use about a yard and you're just going to line them up and they don't match the 
on the end, you can just trim off the edge like so. And we're just going to trim off the other end just a little bit. And we're going to fold it in half. Fold it in half again. Okay, so this part, you need to pay close attention. You don't want to cut through the center. You want to cut about a quarter up. All right, and then you're just going to open it and open it again. And then we're going to go sew it. All right, so let's go. And we still have our settings at seven, zero, and four. Set it underneath the presser foot. Go forward, back stitch, and forward. You might have to pause a few times to make sure everything's aligned. And if you accidentally get over like this, it's okay because you're going to ruffle it and you'll never notice it. Okay, back stitch. Okay, and there we go for this ruffle. I recommend adhering it to your project before you make the ruffle. But I want to show you what it looks like and how to do it. So you'll just go like, with the top layer and pull it to the center just a little bit. And then maybe go to the next layer. There isn't an exact method of doing this. It's just whatever you think looks the best to you. And you can open it just a little bit here and there. The next trim we're going to make is this one. And I really like this one because you can have more control over your cuts. So this one's a little bit more dainty. Or you can do nice chunky ones like this one. And I'm using four pieces just like this one. And the colors are lime green, aqua, white, and pink. We'll just have them lined up like this. And then you're just going to do a straight stitch down the middle, but we will do that together, so let's go. For the dainty ruffle, we're going to change our settings just slightly. We're going to change the tension back to four. And we're changing the length of our string, or, or the length of our stitches, back to three because we are going to do a regular straight stitch. Now this one has four pieces of crepe paper. You can do less, you can do more. All right, everything's somewhat aligned. And we're just gonna go straight. I just realized I forgot to lock my stitch in, but it's okay. I can either cut the crepe paper off and knot the two strings together, or I can use a little bit of terrifically tacky tape and place it on the back to lock the stitch in. I need to do a few more things to this, so let's go to the cutting part. Before we start making the ruffle part, we're going to lock that stitch in with terrifically tacky tape or sticky thumb or you can use a little dollop of hot glue but there that will keep it in place all right so we're going to take the bottom layer that would be the green layer for me and you're just going to fold them into each other just like this
and then you're going to pull the other side into each other. And you're just going to trim off just a little bit. Okay. And you're going to take the blue layer and line it up with the green layer. And then you're just going to trim a little bit off the white and pink layer. And then you're left with the pink layer and you're going to do the same thing. And if your ends aren't lining up, you can always just trim it. Right now we're just going to lay all the layers flat again. So far it looks really cool. You can actually make an embellishment just like this. Put a large embellish right here and then some ribbon. Okay, now we're going to take little slits. You can do little ones or large ones, but I like small dainty ones. Now you want to go close to the sewing line, the line, the straight stitch, but you don't want to cut through it. But if you do, you can always just snip all the way through, put a little bit of tacky tape, and start over. Okay, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Just some of it, just to show you. Okay. Now I recommend just leaving this and then gluing it or using tacky tape to your project and then do it, like ruffle it. But I don't have a project for this right now so we'll just do it this way for now. So you're just going to go from layer and just kind of do this. Now be patient. Don't just go like this, because it won't look right. <laughs> but there. That is what it looks like. Smaller version of this one. Okay. So that is this project. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Build Your Stash. And if you have any future recommendations for videos, please let me know in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please share it with a friend. Well, I hope you have an amazing day. Toodles!